All right, I mean, to each his own and all, but what is that? I mean, come on. Look at those things, it's terrible. I'm at a loss. But hey, who am I to judge? Neither rain, nor sleet, nor snow. Well, maybe snow. But none of that other stuff will stop me from fixing someone's screw up. Uh, this car just had a radiator put in it and uh, they were driving down the interstate and then the car overheated So uh, we're gonna figure out what's going on here Not going to run it long because it probably has no coolant So let's uh, let's get into the shop over there and uh, assess this situation here And parking the auto powering down Um, nope. Okay, I require the windows to work. Always crack a window so you can't lock yourself out of the car. It looks like the front ones are broken. Okay. And uh, popping the hood. Let's assess the carnage. By the way, this is a 2008 Infiniti EX35 with a 3.5 liter and 136,000 miles. That's new. Hmm. The hood won't stay up by itself. I need my long rod. And that can go right there. Safe. Well, that's the whole problem right there. The cap's on upside down. Ooh. We have no coolant. I uh, wonder why. There's some coolant down there. Well, let's see if they, in fact, did put a radiator in this. I can't see it. Oh, yeah, that's brand new. Nice and shiny. Well, I'm not seeing much uh, from up here. Let's raise this up and check it out from down below. Hello. That's cool. I found some. Oh, I bet that junk was everywhere. If it ended up in there, that means it was everywhere under this hood. Oh, I found it. I found it right there. You guys see? Look at that little plastic, uh, there's a plastic connector in there and uh, that thing has broken. Found it, okay, cool. All right, let's uh, lose this cover for more spacious access. plastic barb that connects those two pieces of hose and uh, it has broken. So I'm going to try to dig that out of there and replace it. That there. I think I can get it out. Fingies crossed. Yeah, there's, there's really not much space here to play with. So this is, uh, this is going to be kind of harder than it looks. Climbing in now. Just gonna sort of lay on top of the engine some. I need to remove the clamp from the hose. Oh, yeah, put throw it over there. Zebra cakes. All 
Alright, there's one. No, seriously, I'm not kidding. Look, zebra cakes. No, there's only one zebra cake. Come on, clamp. Got it. Okay, that was the easy part. Hard part is going to be digging this plastic out. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. I'm gonna get a hold of the plastic part. Easier said than done. And we'll work the screwdriver under it. Check it out. Got it. Now, this one's the tough one because it's uh, it's broken off, recessed into the pipe. It's not flush. So, and it's pointed away from us too. And that makes it kind of funnish. Hang on, I'm coming back in. This is uh, hard. This is hard to do. I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm just kind of doing things. I'm doing all that I can. Whoa, don't trip. Sorry, Lou. I'm, I'm laying on my chest and my feet are sticking out. People are walking over me. I didn't get very far. Okay, so I've at least broken the tension between the plastic and the uh, and the rubber. That's a start. Okay, we're gonna try something with my uh, my new snappy snap-on awesome pliers. Hmm, okay, a piece came out. Well, there's less of it in there than when I started, so I'll just keep doing that. Aha. Another piece. All right, we're gonna go for a big chunk this time. Yeah, this is coming out and just crumbles. There's nothing left. Oh, I need to reposition myself. I'm on my knees on the radiator support. It hurts. It's like too brittle to come out all as one piece. I don't like that. It's, uh, it's making this hard. Yeah, there's still more. I can feel it with my, my pinky. There's still more pieces down inside of the pipe. Ugh. A lot of them. Okay, change of plans. Break it up even more. Shh. 
shake out the pieces. Ah, uh, that was it. Yeah, piece fell out. Can you guys see? Nice and clean. And uh, I just happen to have a hose barb that's going to fit that. <laughs> Let's see. You can never go home. Mm, not that drawer. Aha. Uh -huh. That's my guy. I think that's it. Yep. Perfect. This is why I keep stuff like this around. All right, first things first, let's put the clamp back on. This is going to work. Uh, there we go. No guff out of you, hose clamp. Just, just go on. Uh-huh. You. All right, change the plans again. I'll put the hose barb in. Do, 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 do. There it is. Do that one side at a time. That one in. Do, do, do. Then I'll do the clamp. And then the other side. It's a good plan, right? Good as any? It's not gonna work. Well, it kind of works. This is so awkward. It's just not right. doesn't want to go. The clamp just doesn't want to open up enough to slip over the hose. Okay, change of plans again. We're switching pliers. And I've got my safety squints on. This could fly out of here at any moment. The plus side is, is using regular pliers. I can lose the clamp. <laughs> so anyway, for ease of installation, I'm going to go ahead and swap out these OE style clamps to the screw-in worm gear type clamps. We'll just slip that guy right on over. There, that's nice. And it's shiny. Click. And I'll slip this one over the other part of the hose. Shove that in there, like so. Yeah. More. It's not in deep enough. It's gonna go all the way to the rim. can't get two hands on it. Bad angles. Hang on. We need some lube here. This is a 
it's going in dry and it's not going to work. Let's give the tip a good spray so it slides in. To the rim that's that's it we're uh, we're bottomed out here Full of coolant, and we will leak check it again. All right, packing up some. Let's get my uh, goodies out of the way. Okay, I have a no spill funnel that a viewer got me. We're gonna use that. Set it up with the appropriate adapter. Take your funnel, plug it in. When you're done funneling, you plug the plug in the funnel and whatever coolant's left over remains in the bottle. Super nifty. Beginning the coolant installation procedure now. Coolant bottle cam. What are you babbling about? <laughs> it's been raining all day. I said, uh, you talking about me or you talking about the rain? Yeah, I shouldn't be here. You definitely shouldn't I'm not even here right now. Somebody got the new pliers. I, I did. I bought the pliers and, got the free, and I got the free socks. They're really good pliers. No, bro. If you buy shit like that, you don't say that. You say you bought the socks, dog, and it came with free socks. Uh, I, I, yeah, no, I, I did though. I bought the flyers. Yeah. All right. It appears that we're uh, pretty much done here. The cooling system is full. Let's give the hose a squeeze. Maybe we can push through some leftover air. I think we have none. Let's go stop things. The engine. You know, I can't. Uh, I can't fault the, the people that put this radiator in. There is uh, no way they could have predicted that that piece of hose breaks. Unless it was leaking when they worked on it and didn't notice. It, it could have been that. could have been. But I, I can only speculate because I, I was not involved. This was towed here. Uh, either way, I have found a leak and repaired a leak. And now we're going to check for any other leaks. And that will be that on this particular automobile. But the question is, is who pays for that? Does the customer pay for that? Because it's not the repair that was just performed does the other shop pay for that because they misdiagnosed something or maybe they should have seen that it's a tough call to make so on one hand you've got a customer and from their point of view it looks like the other people missed something or broke something or didn't do something and once you get down to the nitty gritty of what actually happened, really no one's at fault and it just happened to break in a very untimely manner, which was on its way home from a, from a cooling system repair. So it's, it's really hard to point the finger on something like that. Why does my light keep turning off? It's having a party. So I haven't given anyone good or bad news yet. Um, it's been about 10 minutes or so and we're still seeing bubbles come up here. Yeah, they still keep coming in. I'm going to give it a few more minutes. We're going to see if this stops. 
this is taking longer than I would assume for the system to purge out all of the air. I'm starting to suspect that perhaps it has a cylinder head gasket leak and that it was over pressurizing the system, which would have caused the radiator to fail. And also could have caused that heater hose connection to fail. I don't want to jump the gun on that just because this seems odd to me at the moment. So I'm going to put this engine through a couple of heating and cooling cycles just to verify that all the air is gone. All right, so I've got the funnel out there under the hood and it's, uh, it's still bubbling away. I think you can see it from here. We're about 15 minutes into runtime and I'm just gonna go ahead and throttle this up for a little while just to make sure everything gets uh, nice and hot and to ensure that the thermostats open up. Look at that, more bubble action. And you notice that the fluid level is not dropping. So uh, perhaps it is not a coincidence that that thing broke. Perhaps it broke from overpressure. about this thing. Something's, uh, something's a little weird about this car. I'm suspecting it's got a blowed up head gasket. But I do see that the coolant level dropped a little bit since we shut her down. But we're also, what, 15 minutes into a cooling system refill? Uh, let's add some to it and we will continue to observe. All right, so, uh, we're another 10 minutes into a restart and we're already creeping up on temperature again. It stopped purging air, but uh, we gotta go ahead and shut her down. Okay, let's check the temperature of the hoses, see if we have flow. Upper hose looks like, what, 213 degrees? And let's check our lower hose back here. You know, see it right there. That one's two, two thirteen. Okay, kind of in uh, limbo on this one. So now that we're all piping hot and everything, I'm done touching this car. Uh, that being said, this is gonna hang out here until tomorrow. All right, guys. Well, sorry that I failed to bring this one to a conclusion. Thought this was gonna be an easy fix, and now it's a uh, now it's gonna be a diagnostic process. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it heat soaked. It got even hotter while it was parked. Okay. So this will be a part two. That being said, thank you guys for watching this video. Hope to see you over on part two. It's not ready yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and post this one today. And then uh, the, uh, the secondary follow-up, uh, I'll do that one the day after, or maybe the day after that. So again, as always, thank you guys for watching. And most importantly, before I go, I have to remind myself to remind you guys to not forget to have a great day. So everybody here, do not forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later.